What is going on, Internet? Eric Vandals back again with another Beard Brand Alliance. I hope all is going well on the other side of the internet. Uh, so you're fat, and uh, it's okay because it ain't your fault. And we're going to talk about what to do about it. Let's go. So there is a epidemic going on. In America, I'm going to talk about America, how pretty much 75% are either overweight or obese. And uh, it's systemic. It's everywhere. And I want to tell you, I think there's a few reasons for it. And this has happened, you know, I'm 40, 40 plus years old. I've seen the rise in obesity levels uh, as I've gotten older. There are things that I think cause this to happen, and I'm going to dive into in a little bit, and then I'm gonna talk about how we're going to be able to overcome it. Now, it's not enough for you to be uh, normal body weight or uh, skinny. It's important for you to be anti-obese. Uh, it's gotten to the point where you can't just go about your normal life and end up uh, in the normal weight range. If you do that, you will become overweight, you will become obese, because essentially society has been built in a way that makes it very hard for you to maintain a normal body weight. Now, when I say anti-obese, of course, I want you to know I'm not anti-obese people. I think all people should be loved and respected, uh, no matter what their identity or what they're going through. And uh, I do think that uh, being overweight or obese is not uh, healthy and can be detrimental to your health. I don't think there is a best diet. I think it's important for you to figure out what diets work the best for you, uh, what ingredients those are going to be. But I do think there are certain things within your diet that you need to be aware of. The big thing is, as much as possible, try to avoid packaged foods. Packaged foods are the most processed and generally include ingredients that are uh, designed for you to enjoy it. And humans instinctively or evolutionarily speaking have developed a need to build fat. And the reason for that is because you have these kind of scarcity time periods where your body needs nutrients over time period. So with modern farming, uh, we essentially have solved our uh, nutritional problems and our blessing of being able to store fat has become a burden for us. The other thing that you can look at is the influence of our ingredients. Uh, the government subsidizes a significant portion of certain types of foods, and that drives the price of those foods down. Some of those foods may be good for you, or they may not be good for you, and they may lead to uh, essentially utilizing these foods in ways that would not have been done normally if there weren't that subsidy. So the manipulations in the marketplace are effectively making a lot of the decisions for you when it comes to the foods that you're going to be eating simply because of the price. Beyond the food, in America, we are very car cultured. Being a car cultured environment means we're getting less walking in, less steps, and that alone is another reason why um, people get fat. We're just inactive. You'll look at people who live in cities who walk a lot more and they are generally going to be uh, a lower body weight than people who live in a car culture one. So I've never personally gotten overweight or significantly overweight. I currently weigh about 200 pounds. I'm six foot five. I'm genetically at an advantage. By being six foot five, my body naturally needs more calories to maintain my body. The other advantage I have is when I get stressed out, I have a tendency to uh, skip meals or not eat rather than uh, solve my stress through eating. I don't want to make it seem like um, I'm perfect in any regards. I recognize that there are some things to my advantage. So kind of like these natural inclinations about my body make it easier for me to maintain uh, a, a healthier weight. Now let's talk about my favorite tips to avoid gaining weight. One, uh, don't drink your calories. Uh, so I drink my coffee black. Uh, I drink water. I don't drink sodas. Maybe on a rare occasion, like once a month, I'll have a Coke. I really don't drink alcohol anymore. Again, the same thing. Maybe I'll have one or two beers uh, a month. Uh, so those are uh, kind of empty calories that don't bring a lot of nutrition to your body, don't bring a lot of health. This has happened over time, you know, like it hasn't been an overnight kind of thing that I've done. And that's the, the thing that I want you to take away from this is like moving towards a 
healthy lifestyle and the choices you make need to become permanent parts of how you make decisions. And the only way they're gonna become permanent is if you do it gradually over a long period of time, rather than trying to switch everything overnight, having this shock and then falling back into the old camp. So usually I recommend, you know, kind of one change at a time at a very slow pace. When it comes to foods, uh, the less processed, the better. Uh, as close to the natural ingredients, the better. So the less processed, so eating a steak versus, um, you know, a, a sausage would be one example of the meats that you should have instead of eating a granola bar, you, you make oatmeal and have oatmeal direct. So small things like that, if you can make those changes where you're preparing your own foods rather than eating prepared foods or preserved foods uh, is going to be, in my opinion, a better diet for you. Now, when it comes to diet, there's a lot of different ones. You know, there are vegans who are healthy. There are carnivores who are healthy. There are fasters who are healthy. There's people who just eat a normal diet who are healthy. There's a lot of different ways to do it. What's the best way is the one that you can stick with that you find works best for your system. Personally, I really value convenience. So I do eat a fair amount of fast food or food that's relatively easy to prepare. Um, so that means like a lot of yogurts for me. I eat a lot of fried chicken. I want to admit it. Like I don't have the best diet. And I think that's kind of the lesson too, is like you don't have to be perfect to have a good diet. What's more important is the things that you avoid. Like I avoid the Cokes. Uh, I avoid like snacking or just like having food around me and nibbling on things like kind of like these mindless calories that come up. And I also work to exercise my body and generate more calories uh, so my body can uh, consume a few more calories. Now talking about exercise, again, the same thing. The best exercise is the one that you can do. I think it's really important. Some people may be in this position. Some people may not be in this position. But if you're looking for a new place to live or relocating, try to relocate to a place where you can legit walk to the restaurants, walk to pick up groceries, walk to grab coffee. A very walkable environment or neighborhood is going to help you just the easy ways of uh, staying fit. These small things integrate um, fitness into my life in a way that doesn't really change what I'm doing. It just becomes part of my life. And the more you can systematize and automate good practices, the better it's going to be. Beyond a normal, active, kind of healthy lifestyle, I'm a big believer in strength training. I think strength training is going to be something that helps obviously build muscle, which will burn more calories, which will help you not con you know, have consume too much excess calories because your body needs to burn it. But it also strengthens your bones and allows you to, to live uh, a longer lifestyle. Now, another great habit to maintain a healthy weight is to track things. So if you're not tracking it, uh, if it's not something visible to you, then it's not going to be something that you engage in. So I weigh myself regularly, uh, usually a few times a week. Uh, I've got a scale that ties into my Garmin and it will give me some more uh, data in terms of like my lean mass to my fat to my BMI to uh, like my water levels and, and all these things. So being able to track, you know, my activity, being able to track uh, what my weight is. And if I really wanted to get anal, I could track my calories and my food. But I found that that's for me, that's a point of diminishing returns. I kind of have the energy levels that I like and the body le body weight that I like that I don't want, you know, fitness and health and everything to just consume me and become my identity. So I do think like everything, there's a balance. I want you to think about your weight in terms of your life and what you're looking for. You know, do you want more energy levels? Do you want to be able to, you know, uh, pick up your, your kids and throw them around and have fun at the pool? Do you want to be able to take off your shirt at the pool and feel confident in how your body looks? There's a lot of different ways to maintain a healthy body and for different reasons uh, or a healthy body weight. And I encourage you guys to to embark on that if you're currently struggling uh, not being in um, in the right mindset. One other thing that I really recommend is put yourself around other individuals who are performing the way you want to perform. So if you want to be healthy, if you want to be at a normal body weight, if you are currently struggling, where do all the people with normal body weights hang out? What kind of things are they doing? How do you integrate them into your life so that just naturally their habits become your habits. Now I make this video hoping that 
you can look at yourself in the mirror and love the person you're looking at. Even if you are a little bit bigger than you prefer, even if you are not at your current ideal weight, I want you to look at that man in the mirror knowing that you love him, knowing that he's worth the investment, knowing that the investment is gonna be challenging and change is challenging and change can be hard, but it's worth it. The benefits that come along with investing in your body, investing in your beard, investing in your hair, investing in that person looking back at you in the mirror are worth it because only you spend 100% of the time with yourself. There is not a single better investment than loving the energy levels that you have, loving the fact that your back's not hurting all the time, that you know, you're know you constantly taking medications for high blood pressure or, or uh, you know, heart issues or whatever it may be that you can you know, eat healthy, exercise well, and you know, live a long and healthy life. Uh, for the people out there who are struggling, know that you're not alone. You are part of the majority. It is systemic. It is not your fault. Um, foods are made to be addictive. Foods are made to, you know, deliver what your body instinctively wants. It's okay. Like, it is a struggle. It is normal to fight this. And it is challenging. Thanks for everything. Cheers. Keep on growing. What's up? Uh, Beard Brand Founder here, and I uh, wanna talk about this utility oil. We encourage you to use it not just for your beard, but beyond the beard. This works great as a face oil, as a tattoo moisturizer, body moisturizer, skin moisturizer, anywhere you wanna hydrate. Enjoy utility oil.